Allowing a two-ton car to fly at the same time is a huge challenge. You may not know, but this car is actually much bigger than the G9, and it only takes two passengers. However, sending two people of less than 200 kilograms into the sky has already been pretty exhausting for us. First of all, the flying car needs to be very light, but the range has to be as long as possible, so the battery needs to be powerful enough to last hundreds of kilometers. Unfortunately, it's only able to fly maybe a few dozen kilometers. But we believe it will be the world's first flying car that can drive and fly at the same time that are fully electric and intelligent. Some of the challenges that we face right now include the difficulty of flying a car that weighs nearly two tons. The difficulty level is over a hundred times more than flying a drone that weighs hundreds of grams because of the high power requirements. The entire rotor diameter of the flight control is nearly 3.5 meters. The inertia is so huge for the rotation, how do we solve that? How do we tackle the MVH level inside and outside of the car? And how to let everyone enjoy the experience of flying in the air as well as driving? We were really excited when we saw it at the scene, because we used to fly the machine that weighs hundreds of kilograms. None of them were more than one ton. However, next year we are expected to actually drive and fly an engineering test vehicle. These are the great challenges that we experienced for the past year. Now, in the recent month, many of you may have seen our Xpeng's Aero HT flying car's first flight in overseas airspace, getting many media attention domestically and internationally. Many of my friends have shared some videos to me asking whether or not this is a flying car or a flying machine because it has no wheels. They are right. For the past nine years, we've been developing flying machines. And for the past and for the past eight years, we've been building cars. And we are now trying to make a car that can fly. It's driving flying integrated, it's capable of vertical takeoff and landing, it's fully electric and intelligent. Now the photo that you are looking at right now is our last year's photo. We make some adjustment this year. Why? For example, after we folded the two wings into the car body, we discover an issue. The height of the wings unfolded was probably less than one meter high. And it caused some safety concerns, especially when there is a strong wind that is, for example, category six and above. If you land in such a condition, the car body will swing and there will be safety problems. I believe our final production car will look at least 80% similar to what you see in our photos. So this is the driving mode and the other is the flying mode. In the flying mode, we have four axes and eight propellers. Coming up, I would like to share with you some real data and videos that we collected from our R&D stage. First, we have changed from the original two rotors to a distributed multi-rotor structure. We can see that in the updated structure, there is higher safety advantage. The most important thing is that even if one propeller fails, there is still no problem. We're now trying to test to see if there's going to be any problems with two failing propellers. Second, its overall size will be smaller after unfolding, so there will be less restrictions on the takeoff and landing. But unfortunately, it's not as small as you think. Many people thought that in the middle of a traffic jam on a highway, they could just unfold and fly out. Sorry, you might have to clear the row before you do that, because the takeoff will still require the size of about half a basketball court. Now, maybe I can share with you a short video to see that in the safety system, as you can see, one of the propellers is failing. But no problem, we still are able to fly steadily.
This is actually very difficult to achieve. To be honest, safety is our first priority, and it's most important and most difficult to do. But it's something that we must do well and do right. Many people say, even though I can drive, I've never flown a plane. Do I need to learn to fly a plane? There's no need. We have added a lever to the current steering wheel. This makes it very easy for any people who can drive to learn how to fly this car. It may take as short as only one day. In the past year or so, how to let people learn quickly how to fly a plane safely and reliably and stably is something that we have done a lot in. As you can see, through this double keyboard, with this gear lever, the simple addition can allow you to do all those things.